Chris tied a career high today uh, for season sacks, 15 and a half. He talked to us in the offseason about trying to have this kind of season uh, based on the way last year finished. Can you just kind of walk us through this journey you've had this year? Um, it's been fun. Uh, we still got a ways to go. Leading into the playoff, um, it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. And I think we finish in a good good mind frame, good place as a D-line overall. Uh, my supporting cast, when I'm with those guys, been able to do for me, free me open. Joe Cullen bringing him in as a mentor for me and as a D-line coach has um, completely transpired my game, um, whether it's the run game or the pass rush. So I'm very grateful. How eager are you or have you been for a while? You know, last year stuck with me. Uh, I had two critical plays that I should have made um, that I missed, and um, yeah, we know how the game went. So this year, we we eager to get after it after the bye week, of course, and home field advantage. Chris, what specifically has Joe Collin done for you in the game? Um, most importantly, we have the same mind frame and. <clears throat> Passion towards pass rushing. You know, I love to pass rush. Uh, natural born pass rusher. <laughs> but um, we emphasize on improving in the run this year. Um, taking my game to another level on the pass rush and the run game and um, pushing me to become a more complete player than just a pass rusher. Chris, is there an extra bit of satisfaction when a team knows they're double teaming you? You know they're double teaming you, that the slot's coming to you, and you still get a sack like the first one today? It's more so understanding. Um, I know it's coming. I haven't seen it throughout the year, and it's about my counter reaction. I'm going to play it. What I'm able to do in this defense that Spags allowed me to do, and um, you know, the first, first one is very successful with it. Chris, this is the first game since DeMar Hamlin was hurt. I, I wonder if, how you processed any of that, if it was or wasn't a factor anyway before you got out there and played it. Um, thoughts and prayers go out to DeMar. Um, I read that he's um, actually talking now. He sent a message to the team, and that's tremendous to, to, to watch that um, from home on my couch, which it could have been one of my brothers who I played with. Um, I definitely was affected emotionally, and going into this game, being the first game that's played since that um, incident that happened, you know, it was heavy on my heart. I said a prayer for him, and um, I said a prayer for my teammates also to ensure their safety. I don't think it's ever out of your mind as a player to experience that. I think you try to mask it with what's going on in your surroundings. Chris, I asked you last week about Colin Saunders and him being healthy. This week you got a chance on offense. Did you see his play? And what <laughs> Pat should have threw it. <laughs> Pat should have threw it. I'm blaming Pat. It's the quarterback fault. Um, we've been working at play since uh, week one of the season. And um, I think this is the second time they called it. The first time they called the timeout. Coach Reed took him out second time. Um, Pat should have threw it, but the defensive um, DB ran up field, which forced Colin to kind of angle it out. And he wanted to, yeah. Was it a good route? Uh, with the circumstances, uh, I can't go against my guy. He's a deep block guy, yeah. Okay. Derek Carr, a number of times you've gotten a car. The first time you faced out Jarrett Stidham, what did you see in that quarterback, that new quarterback that got his first start last week? He's very poised. Um, I think with uh, repetition, he he can, he can be a good quarterback in this league. Um, he'll stand in the pocket. He'll take a hit. He, he's very patient with it. Yeah. He's understanding of the game, very shifty also. So much respect to him and uh, Raiders organization for believing in him and actually starting him over Derek Carr. Wish him much success. Not against the Chiefs, though. Hey Chris, how complete of a game was today's defensive performance? You should always be critical of your, if you look at performances with a critical eye, how would you rate today? We dropped a few interceptions. Um, we led two to three quarterback runs get out past six to eight yards. I mean, uh, we can be better in that area, but I think we played pretty good um, last game of the season. Um, knock on wood, hopefully everyone came out healthy. Um, and we got a week off. Um, we, we came in with the intention knowing what's at stake and uh, what we're fighting for. And uh, we was able to win the game, most importantly. So um, head into the playoffs, we get a bye week, we get home field advantage, everything we wanted going into the season. And um, we're looking forward to the playoffs. We'll go three more. We'll go Sam, Scott, and then Len. 
I love George, man. Um, you know, like I said earlier, we kind of asked George to step in and be a starter on this defense. It's not comical, but um, he's answered. Um, I think he's going to be a tremendous player. Um, the more he play, the more repetition he, he's out there, the more he's able to fill the game, the more knowledge he has. And you got to be patient with him. He's young. Um, you got to give him time to grow. But I love George. That's my guy. I have basically the same question, but he's been such a consistent sack guy the last five, six games. What does that do for you, having another guy who demands that much attention? Um, what is it, five for five right now? Oh, okay, George. Um, yeah, um, he's been staying with me after practice, working on his pass rushing. Um, the commitment that he's um, he's broadcasted throughout the season is starting to show on the field. And it, sometimes it doesn't translate with your work that you put in, and you expect this, and sometimes you don't get that. And I was telling him, you got to be patient with that. Sometimes it's not for you to get it. You know, it's not in your plan to get as many stats as you want to get. Sometimes it's about the growing process, what you learn throughout the year to become a player that you're going to be. So he's very understanding today. I have a lot of uh, talks with him about being patient. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's your first year. We know you want 20 sacks. And, you know, everybody wants the double digit sacks, but it's a process that you got to go through in order to achieve that type of success. Last one, man. Uh, Chris, uh, uh, just this level of satisfaction getting through the season and sweeping the division. Oh, man, that's refreshing. Um, <laughs> Listen, um, you know, going into the year, uh, we had a lot of criticism on we might be the worst team in this division. And I know every player in that locker room and every coach in that locker room um, heard about it or seen it on social media or on the ESPN. And with all the all the transitions this defense, I mean, this um, division made, whether bringing in Chandler Jones, uh, Russell Wilson, and the Chargers, Adding Khalil Mack, you know, they counted us out. And with Coach Reed and Pat and the supporting cast, we was able to overcome every adversity, every stick and stone that were thrown our way. And um, go undefeated in the division. So I think that's tremendous. Uh, it takes a lot to do that. That's not an easy task. It's, it's take, it takes a lot from each individual also to buy in and to truly believe in that. And um, I'm just extremely I'm extremely proud of these of these young men. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Bye, guys.